It's April 1st. Out here back at Newtown. This was one of the first spots I hit as I was putting the pieces together. And the first time I came out here was, well, for the first time I came out here for the project, it was started getting some attention, some press attention, and wanted some headshots from one of the publications that uh, was covering the story. And so I had to find a good scenic location and Nothing close comes close, as they say. So, yeah, it's springtime. Springtime is good. So this is the storage sensor, uh, the old beer fridge, which has been cleaned out for most of the stuff. There's a few things in there that probably need to be drank. They're probably getting skunky. But um, yeah, they've got about you know, probably like 20 samples in here close to it. Um, and then there's another bucket of samples out in the garage, which is it's been cold enough lately that I haven't been too worried about it. So each one's been labeled typically when I go out. I'll put them in a bucket like this so I can screw the top one and then when I need the buckets again can uh, transfer them to a, a bag and label the bags. So I figured I'd start with a, a close by location in case this screws up and I need to go back and, and, and get another sample from there. I don't want to go all the way up to Haver Grace to do that. So this one was from Newtown. Um, it's pretty far back in uh, the winter probably right around like early February I got this one uh, that we'll be using for the inaugural 100 Shores shirt. So if you're on the 100 Shores website, uh, on the homepage up here, there is a link for the map that will take you to the map that shows you where most of the locations are up to date on here of where uh, water samples have been taken. So Newtown Neck right down here on the Potomac between Maryland and Virginia. Like I said, close to home in case I need to go back out and get another one in case this doesn't work out. Uh, so Newtown Neck is a great little hidden gem of a state park, uh, a lesser traveled state park for sure. Uh, there's a shore story about it too. If you click on that link on the web page, uh, story that's uh, close to home for me. Again, uh, the shore stories aren't as up to date as the locations are just because it takes a little bit longer to write about each location than it does to uh, actually dip the bucket in the water. And here is the... Newtown Neck shirt marked with the Newtown Neck coordinates 38 degrees 1430 north by 76 41 54 west one of a kind which on the map is right here on the Potomac right about there Retton Bay Newtown Neck State Park right at the mouth of Gretton Bay and the Potomac and the rest of the shirt Potomac going all the way up 
Harper's Ferry and beyond. So we start with just a little bit of hot water so that we can dissolve. We're using indigo blue for this run of 100 shirts and everything else we'll be doing. So pretty simple, a uh, teaspoon of dye. So that keeps getting stirred up. It looks really dark right now, but it'll lighten up obviously as we go. Next thing that goes in is salt and a lot of it. Use a cup and a half of salt. And this is one of those, uh, even though some of the water for the project will be coming from uh, salt water, brackish water shorelines. Not all of them will be, and the salinity changes, so salinity is an important part of the dye process. So just to make sure we have the dye solution the way we want it. Stir, 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 stir. And then, the fun part, our shore sample going in. Newtown Neck. A little bit salty. And that'll continue to get stirred up for the next few minutes. Get a nice even mixture. While I go ahead and get the first shirt ready. So what I'm doing here is just spraying the shirt down with clean water, just plain cold water, uh, activating the shirt's fibers so that it'll accept the dye particles more readily, making it less streaky and splotchy. So this is uh, my patent pending uh, dye tray that, or my agitating tray with um, this fancy uh, child's rocking baby rocker device on it. Uh, the baby rocker was recalled by the company, I think, if I'm not mistaken, don't sue me, company listed there. Um, but I think it was recalled for not this reason, some other reason. But it's got a nice little actuating motor in it, which um, agitates this tray just enough. And agitating the dye solution is, again, good for getting nice, even color. Um, and keeps me from having to do this sort of thing over and over for the next 45 minutes or so. So the shirt goes in. It doesn't really matter if it gets... Um, any sort of bunches in it right now as you can see because it will get agitated because it will get agitated over time as the uh, as the process goes forward but here's the magic moment
And that looks, it looks fine right now, especially on screen, but it will start to darken up uh, over the next 10 or 15 minutes into a really nice indigo blue uh, while I get it all finished up. So I'm going to make sure that it's totally, totally saturated. Like I said, when I, when I sprayed it down, it makes the, the soaking part much less of a headache. Um, there'll be little air bubbles that'll go away as it gets agitated. And over time, I'll come back and you know flip it over or rotate it to make sure that uh, the, we get as even a color as we can, which it'll be pretty even. Um, I, I know what I'm doing, believe it or not. I disabled the music on it so we don't have to listen to nursery rhymes as it soaks. Um, and so just that little bit of movement right there is all I really, is all I really want to make sure that uh, the dye slowly moves around. So this has been soaking for just a few minutes and now I've got timers set for the next hour every five minutes I'll come in and make sure that any of these little valleys and nooks and crannies um, haven't set up too much and that the agitation is doing its work uh, and so every five minutes I'll give it another little shake and it sounds time intensive it is but don't worry I've got an assembly line set up I've got uh, well, for one, I've got another one of these uh, agitators that um, can double up the speed, which makes a huge difference, <laughs> making it go twice as fast. Uh, but I've got, you know, I've got a big stack of shirts over there, all split out by sizes, ready to start moving. Uh, so the next month is going to be busy here in the studio and uh, very, uh, very time intensive in terms of alarm clocks and, and timers going off so stay tuned we'll see how this one turns out in about an hour so I realized I forgot to put this part in the video but what I just put in here uh, is soda ash which is the last part that goes in after the dye has soaked through the majority of the process uh, so then just for the last step of the process, the soda ash goes in, which is uh, acts as a fixative and actually is what alters the, the, the fibers themselves, uh, the cellular structure of each of those cotton fibers uh, in order to make the bond permanent in each strand of cotton. So uh, everything is you know, really smooth, streak free. There's not a lot of, there's really no splotching or streaks in the dye job. Everything uh, is nice and even. Just like a pro would do it. All right, so back on top of the other dye tray. The shirt has soaked for about an hour. And that's where we're at. Let's say it's pretty successful. Wait, Clear as day. Find your home. No problem with that man. So I got it hanging up here. It's soaking or dripping for a minute. Colors are, colors are perfectly smooth. No streak, which is excellent. Um, I'm gonna turn on the humidifier. Let it dry as slow as possible. So that the reactions can continue to do their thing and then come back probably tomorrow and maybe even try it on and see how it looks. And so here we go, 100 shores, 
first one down back where it was born 99 more to go a little chilly out so i had to accessorize but uh feels good someone will be wearing this soon don't worry it still has a few more washes to go through but uh the inaugural shirt 